de Grel found himself rejected with neither power nor influence. Then, in 1941, de Grel did something extraordinary. Instead of turning against Hitler, he decided to join him. He was determined to win the Fuhrer's respect through his skills as a warrior. De Grel decided to use his Rexist movement as the basis of a Belgian offshoot of the German army. They were called the Wallonian. He persuaded some fellow Rexists to join him in Hitler's crusade against communism. One of them was Fernand Kaisergruber, who was just 19 when he joined up. Ironique, la lutte anti-communiste. Et je partais contre le bolchevisme. Et finalement, pour nous, c'était l'armée européenne, puisque nous étions même, je crois, 37 pays. Donc, il n'y avait aucune raison de m'en faire ou de, de se faire du souci à ce sujet-là. Kaiser Gruber started as a private in the Wallonian. And so did Leon de Grel. For all his political status, he had no military experience so there were no special privileges for him. Je ne connais qu'un homme politique qui s'est engagé pour combattre lui-même sur le front. Je n'en connais aucun autre. But de Grel was fearless in battle. Il n'avait pas peur d'exposer sa vie. Ce n'était pas un militaire de nature, mais Il se pliait aux obligations requises d'un militaire. Ça, c'est un jour. Et il n'a pas, il n'a pas eu peur du peu une fois de ramener les hommes au front et passer devant. Hein. Ça, ça s'est arrivé. Hein. By 1942, de Grel had been awarded the Iron Cross, and a year later. The Wallonian had been incorporated into the Nazi elite SS. They were fighting not just against communism, but as members of Hitler's ideological army. De Grel was made second in command. But he had not forgotten his political ambitions. For him, the Chakassi pocket was the perfect chance to prove himself to the Führer. To do that, he would have to hold off the might of Zhukov's army. De Grel and his Wallonian were deployed on the northeast of the Chakassi pocket with SS Viking as mobile support. They were positioned to defend the airfield at Corson. There were just 1,200 of them spread thinly along a 30 kilometer long front. Among them was Fernand Kaisergruber. Zhukov knew that the airfield at Corson was critical to German survival. He was determined to cut off this lifeline. His initial tactics were unusual. He began to play mind games with de Grel's Wallonian. When a break in the battle came, he broadcast a message in perfect French from across the Soviet lines. It 
had said that all hope was lost and that they had better surrender. Fifty of de Grel's men deserted. They gave Zhukov's commanders exact details of their positions and numbers. Armed with this information, Zhukov launched a precise assault. He drove de Grel from his position and began to close in on the Corson airfield. More than a hundred of the Valonians' trucks were destroyed, and the Soviets demanded the unit surrender. But Zhukov hadn't counted on Leon de Grel's devotion to the German cause. De Grel was driven by personal ambition and uh, military ambition, and also political ambition. There is no doubt in my mind that he wanted uh, the Valonian uh, brigade to play as a prominent part in battle as it could. Despite being massively outnumbered, de Grel, with reinforcements from SS Viking, drove his men forward in a counterattack. followed four days of brutal hand-to-hand -hand combat. When his superior was killed, de Grel took command. He was wounded twice, but he wouldn't give up. And in the end, Together with his men, he managed to push the Russians back. Thanks to the efforts of the Valonian and Viking, the airstrip at Korsen was safe. Amongst the trapped men, a potent mix of low morale, fear and despair began to take hold. 